This is seven national news and in our top story, the UA president, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, has given orders that the 30th of November every year will be observed as Martyrs Day. The day will be in memory of and in tribute to the sacrifices offered by the nation's martyrs who have offered their lives while performing their national duties within and outside the country in civilian, military and humanitarian fields. The president also ordered that this national event be declared a public holiday. According to news agency WAM, on the day, national ceremonies and events will be organised where all state institutions, nationals and non-nationals will be engaged to promote, mark and remember the values of sacrifice, dedication and loyalty which are deeply embedded in the conscience of UA citizens who have sacrificed their lives in battles of heroism, dedication and national duty. In his capacity as the ruler of Dubai, the Vice President and Prime Minister of the UA, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, has issued Law Number 23 of 2015, regulating the disposition of impounded vehicles in Dubai. The law stipulates that the Dubai Police Commander in Chief shall set up a committee with representatives from the Dubai Police, the Dubai Municipality, the Road and Transport Authority, Dubai's Public Prosecution and other government entities concerned. The law authorises the committee to sell the impounded vehicles at a public auction. No fees or fines shall be levied on impounded vehicles after the grace period. Under the law, Dubai police shall, after the expiry of three months, notify the owner of the impounded vehicle to reclaim it and then inform the creditors to take legal procedures to guarantee their rights within 30 days of the date of notification, which will be published in two local widely circulated newspapers, one in English and the other in Arabic. If the owner and the creditors fail to take action within the 30-day notification period, the Dubai police shall compile a final list of the vehicle's pending disposition and then send it to the committee to hold a public auction. The committee may also, in coordination with the public prosecution, sell vehicles seized for being involved in traffic and criminal incidents after three months of the closing of the traffic incident file or a court judgment. The law also allows the owner of the impounded vehicle to reclaim it before the conclusion of the public auction, provided that he pays all costs, fees and fines. The Dubai municipality held a two-day meeting this week with the municipality of Barcelona, focusing on the Barcelona City Hall strategy, as well as lessons learnt from its Smart City initiative. Officials from both sides also signed an initial agreement to share their best practices for creating smart cities. The deal was signed by His Excellency Hussein Luter, the Director General of the Dubai Municipality on day one, and Josip Piquet, the Chief Executive of Barcelona City Council's Economic Growth Office. According to research conducted by Juniper, one of the leading analyst firms in the mobile and digital tech sector, Barcelona was ranked the number one smart city globally for the year 2015, followed by New York, London, Nice and then Singapore. This makes Barcelona an ideal partner to achieve His Highness the UA Vice President, Prime Minister and ruler of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum's directive, which is to make Dubai the smartest city on earth within three years. In addition, Dubai's planners will visit Barcelona in November this year for the Smart City Expo, which will take place from the 17th to the 19th of November to learn from its experience. We have signed uh, in 2006 an agreement with Barcelona City. Uh, therefore, uh, today we have a delegation from Barcelona to activate the uh, agreement we have signed in 2006. Uh, and many other uh, services. Uh, at the meantime, we are talking about the strategic uh, planning, development of the municipality, and even about the uh, IT uh, de development uh, and the services of Wi-Fi to turn into uh, a smart city. Therefore, uh, Dubai municipality is very keen to develop uh, the relation with the cities 
that uh, has been signed an agreement, sister cities with Dubai municipality. And as you saw today uh, with the delegation from Barcelona, we, we are really happy, looking forward to develop the relation. And they are also inviting us to attend the Smart City uh, conference in Barcelona. Barcelona was developing an incredible district of innovation, 20 to add. It's a district that is transforming not only the infrastructures and the urban planning, also the economic and social development. I feel that the lessons from 20 to add uh, are very clear. We have to develop an holistic approach, connecting the smart city with the knowledge city. That's really our big lesson. And really, when you look at that, you will see that we need to connect the urban planning. How can we connect uh, not only the science and the technology with the uh, industry, also with the market, and also how can we invite companies, entrepreneurs and big corporations to work in our district. In this way you will see that we are developing a knowledge-based economy because we are connecting science, technology, industry and market. But also we discover that the real raw material of the knowledge-based economy is the talent. Filipinos living abroad can now apply for a free one- or two-year extension to their existing passports. The Philippines Department of Foreign Affairs has issued a notification stating that extensions shall be processed and released within the same day and shall be available only until the end of this year. This comes due to technical difficulties in printing in Manila, which has caused long delays. Here in the UAE, the Philippines ambassador, Grace Relucio Princesa, said that the regular process of validating the passport extension would usually take one to two days. If someone needs an extension on the same day, they will have to pay a small fee. According to media in the Philippines, about 42,230 Filipinos overseas from across the globe have been affected by the delays. The Public Transport Agency of the Roads and Transport Authority has completed the installation of 3D maps of public bus routes in 16 bus stations across Dubai in order to make the service more accessible for commuters. Adele Mohamed Shakri, the Director of Planning and Business Development at the RTA Public Transport Agency, stated that the 3D maps are characterised by ultra-high accuracy where all details of the station are visible and service points are clearly marked. A spider map has also been provided depicting the path of public bus routes serving the station, along with the offences code, all of which are integrated in a single map. These can be found at entry and exit points at the stations. He added that they are currently working on the provision of seats and shade for passengers as well as slashing at the service frequency on some routes based on public feedback and field observations. They are also improving the service of inquiring about lost items. He added that a new plan is also being developed where transport information will be on display at various facilities and landmarks of Dubai. Dubai Traffic Police issued 388 fines to vehicles carrying excess loads during the first seven months of 2015. Colonel Saif Muhair al Mazri, the director of Dubai Traffic Police, revealed that they have noticed many vehicles flouting this rule in recent months, which makes drivers prone to losing control of vehicles and also overturning. He stated that this often leads to tragic consequences, which is why they are focusing on this issue at present. In January, police issued 43 fines for carrying excessive loads, 48 in February, 81 in March, 45 in April, 93 in May, 43 in June and 35 in July. The fine for carrying excessive loads in light vehicles without a license is 200 dirhams, seven days impoundment and three black points. The same violation for heavy vehicles is punishable by seven days impoundment, six black points and a 500 dirham fine. Colonel Amazrui urged drivers to abide by traffic laws and regulations.